welcome to our series on vectors. We'll understand how do we find the relative velocity in this video, specifically the ground velocity, after drawing a vector diagram. Here is a test question for you, and I hope it will help you. You can always join my classes by sending an email on the address given. Let us now enjoy the journey of learning, and that is success. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we have taken an excellent question from one of our students. The question is based on vector diagram and relative velocity. An airplane is flying from Toronto to Montreal, a distance of 510 kilometers on a bearing of 064 degrees. The cruising speed of the plane is 650 kilometers per hour and 80 kilometers per hour wind is blowing on a bearing of 135 degrees. What will be the ground speed of the plane? What heading should the pilot steer to reach Montreal? How long will the trip take? Now, such questions are very important from this point of view. We'll try to understand how do we solve these kinds of questions. You can always pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. So, there are a few terms which I would like you to understand before we begin with the solution. One is the bearing angle. We are given the bearing angle of 064 degrees. What is bearing angle? So let's see what bearing angle is. So let me just sketch a rough diagram here only to indicate what bearing angle is. We are saying an airplane is flying from Toronto to Montreal, a distance of 510 on a bearing of 064. So that means if this is Toronto and going to Montreal, let's say that. Bearing is the clockwise angle from the north. So that is 64 degrees. And we'll always write bearing angle in three places and therefore you'll find 0, 064. So it is the angle from the north clockwise as shown here. Now, that is one part. And the second part which you need to understand is what will be the ground speed of the plane? So, what do you understand by ground speed? Well, ground speed is the relative velocity. It is the velocity with respect to a person on the ground. You get the idea. Now, once you have these concepts absolutely clear, then or we can actually solve this question very easily. Now, to go from Toronto to Montreal, we have to take care of the wind also, which is blowing or a bearing of 135. So 135 means the angle 90 plus 45. You see this. So this is the wind velocity. So basically, what we are seeing here is that from Toronto to Montreal, that will be the resultant velocity or the ground velocity. After all, the person on the ground will watch the plane going from Toronto to Montreal, as shown here. But because of the wind, the plane has to head at an angle, which is less than 64 degrees, right? So that ultimately, it reaches Montreal. So, if you draw the parallelogram taking care of the wind velocity, you can see that the heading of the plane should be actually somewhere here, right? So, from T, the plane will try to head towards a point P. However, because of the wind, which is 80 kilometers per hour, the plane will reach Montreal. You get the idea. So, that becomes a vector diagram. So, in this diagram, 
P to P is the speed of the plane, which is 650 kilometers per hour. P to M represents the speed of the wind, 80 kilometers per hour, and T to M will become the resultant velocity or the ground velocity, which we need to find. You get the idea. So once you have this diagram, then it becomes pretty simple to solve this question. So I hope the concept is clear. Now you can attempt the question and then look into my suggestions. Fine. Now let's begin with the vector diagram, similar to what we just discussed. So we first show the direction north and we notice that the distance and velocity is given to us. Uh, let me make the axis first. Most of the things are happening in quadrant one. So to use the space better, I've drawn like this. The speed of the plane is 510 kilometers, or the distance is 510. The speed is given to us as 650 kilometers per hour and is going at a heading of 064. So basically, from Toronto to Montreal, that is where the plane has to reach. So this will be your resultant velocity, which is also referred to as the ground velocity. Now, as we saw, since the 135 is the angle at which the wind is blowing, wind will push the plane in this particular direction and therefore it has to head at an angle as shown here. Let's call this point as a P. Now let's take into consideration the angles. Now this angle, the bearing of Montreal is given to us as 64. So let me write 64 here. And the wind is at 135. So let's find the angles here. 135 from the north is this, right? So, so what do you notice here is that we'll work out the angles at M, right? At M, we know that the wind being 135 means this is 45, right? 90 plus 45. So this angle here is 45 degrees, right? And now we have to find what the other angle is. So from the horizontal, the other angle should be, since this angle is 64, right? Let me write down here. Alternate angles, 64. So from 90, if you take away 64, you get this angle, right? You could also actually find the angle PMT by considering from the north, this is 45, right? So that should also give you the angle at M. So at M, the total angle should be 180 minus 64 minus 45. And that is equal to 71 degrees. So we first find the angle PMT is equal to 180 degrees minus 64 degrees minus 45 degrees, correct? And that is 71 degrees to us. So I hope this step is clear. Many ways to figure it out. Now, let us write down the given values of the velocities. From T to P, that is 650 kilometers per hour, and the wind is at 80 kilometers per hour. And therefore, in the velocity diagram, we can write TP as 650 and PM as 80. Since we have a combination of angle and the side, we can now find the angle at T, right? So we can say sine of angle, let's call this angle as small t. Let's not use t for 
t is for time, let us say theta. So, this is the small angle sine of theta over a t should be equal to sine of 70, 71 it was not 70, sine of 71 degrees over the side opposite which is 650. So, that gives us sine theta equals to 80 over 650 times sine of 71 degrees. Let us calculate this. 80 divided by 650 times sine of 71 gives us a value which is 0 0.11637 and theta is sine inverse of 0 0.11637 which is equal to shift sine inverse of the angle. It gives us a value of 6.68 degrees. So, this angle theta is 6.68 degrees. So, once you know this angle theta, we can find the angle at P also, right? So, the angle T P M will be 180 minus 71 degrees minus 6.68. So, we have 180 minus 6.68 6 minus 71 and that gives us 102.3. So, we know this angle now as 102.3 degrees. Now, when you know this angle, you can find T to M which gives you the ground velocity, correct? Perfect. So, so let us find the ground velocity. So, we have now the equation. We can write it here and then take it to the next page. We can say ground velocity Vg over sine of 102.3 should be equal to 650 over sine of 71. Correct. So, that will give us the ground velocity. Correct. So, let us do the calculation. So, so we have the ground velocity as, let me write down, Vg equals to from the given equation, or oh, we will write it here itself, okay. So, Vg will be 650 times 102.3 times sine 102.3. Let us change the ink. Or let me just push this page slightly up and rewrite here. Vg equals to 650 times sine of 102.3 divided by sine of 71 degrees. Okay. So, so we have 650 times sine of 102.3 divided by sine 71 and that gives us 671.67 right so we get our answer as 671.67 so we know that the ground velocity is 671.67 so what will be the ground velocity of the plane so we get vg equals to 671.67 kilometers per hour. Is that clear to you? So, that is how we get the ground velocity. Part B is what heading should plane steer to reach Montreal? Let us go back to our diagram. So, the heading will be this much angle. Is that okay? So, 64 minus theta which is theta we found as 6.68. So, this is 64 minus 6.68 degrees, correct? 64 minus 6.68 gives us 57.32. So, so the heading will be 
at an angle of 57.3 degrees, rounded to one decimal place. Correct. So we know this heading. We know the final velocity. We also know the distance. So we can find the answer for the time taken, which is uh, the last part. How long will the trip take? So we know that the velocity, which is the ground velocity, is 671.67 and the distance is 510 kilometers and therefore time will be distance by velocity which is 510 kilometers divided by 671.67 kilometers per hour correct so 510 divided by 671.67 and that gives you the value in decimals as 0 0.793 or you can write 0 0.75976 okay hours so we can convert this to minutes so time 60 will give us 45 minutes and 55 seconds so it is 45 minutes and 50 you can say 56 seconds went rounded right so that will be the time taken by this particular flight. You get the idea. So we basically need to sketch accurate diagram. That helps us to figure out all the unknowns. And then we can find the solution as you have seen in this video. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Feel free to write your comment, share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. In case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Thanks for your time and all the best.